in our quest to find so many different recipes and things that we could do with tomatoes, we actually ended up deciding to do chili. Which is really, really awesome because one of the best things I found this winter is being able to just go to the pantry, grab a jar of soup or chili, and put it on the stove and make dinner in nothing flat. All I have to do is throw in some biscuits or some bread. And oh yeah. Now the first thing that you have to do for this one is to brown your five pounds of hamburger. Five pounds is quite a bit, so you either need a pretty big skillet or else just brown it in rounds. So we're gonna start by putting that into our larger pot because once that's browned, we're going to add some things to it. Here we go. There we are. Now we are leaving the liquids with ours. You probably just saw that drain in here. That's up to you if you want to drain and strain your meat off. And for ours, this was from Longhorn Beef, so it's actually very lean. It's almost more water than if there is fats in there. Okay, next you want to add two cups of chopped onions. Beautiful. And one tablespoon of minced garlic. And then we're going to cook this on the stove until the onions get a little bit softer. Now that our onions are nice and softened, we're going to add the rest of our ingredients. That includes three and a half pounds of chopped tomatoes. I really like the Roma tomatoes because they're so meaty. Half a cup of chili powder. That's right, half a cup. Then we're looking at one tablespoon of cumin, which is one of my favorite spices. One tablespoon of salt. And one teaspoon of chipotle pepper powder. We're gonna give this a little stir and then we're going to put it back on the stove and get it simmering. We're gonna simmer this for 20 minutes. Our chili is all done simmering and we're ready to put it in our jars. We're going to use pint sized jars for this. I really like to use the wide mouth because it's a little easier to get into. Mm -hmm. We're going to be using six pints. We forgot a ladle, didn't I was just thinking that. I'll grab it while you're pouring it out. I saw it. to begin filling our jars. Remember everything's hot right now. Yep. You're going to do one inch of head space. Okay, so that might be a little, little much. Yeah. If it goes a little too high, all you have to do is grab it out and put it in the next jar. Headspace is the distance from the top of the jar to where the food begins. Okay. Which is just a little more than a ladle full of our particular ladle here. A little bit more. The sweet spot between too much and not enough. Do that too much again. <laughs> I need to be looking from the side. Yeah. It's hard from above. It's really hot. And for some reason, this one doesn't want to go on it. Make sure if anything gets on your rings that you use a clean cloth to wipe it off. I think we've done all right so far, mm -hmm. but just remember that if you're doing this. Especially with anything greasy like this, because that can really hinder the seal. Looks like we got a couple extras, which never hurts our feelings. Right, never a bad thing. But we need some small mouth rings. <laughs> Okay. 
So that ended up doing eight of the pint size jars. And this is why we always put a couple of extras in because sometimes it's a little bit variable. Which we're usually happy about. A little extra for the pantry. Okay, now we need to process these through our pressure cooker. If you live at sea level, you're going to put it at 10 pounds of pressure for 90 minutes. Now we live at 1200 feet, so we are going to 11 pounds of pressure for us. If you have any questions about how to increase your pressure based on your altitude or how to use a pressure canner, go ahead and take a look at our Canning Basics video. So we have just enough in here to like taste. There's I really so. not much left like you eat for dinner tonight, but I'm dying to taste it, especially with all of that. Um, Chili powder? Chili powder. I, I know. wasn't sure because I know you, Ray's right, assured right. me this is going to taste good. <laughs> What do you think? Oh, yum. Yeah, the first time I made it and put in that much chili powder, I thought, oh no, this might be too much. But I really wanted it strong because mm -hmm. then what I do is I actually take one pint jar of, of the chili and then I add beans to it, like a mm -hmm. couple of quart jars. And well, good. you could almost use, because this is a really meaty chili base, I mean, obviously you can just eat it as is. Sure. But it would become a really good chili base for whatever you want to amend it to add to you for that particular oh yeah thing. we've yeah. done chili dogs we've done nacho cheese chili sauce and you know all yeah. kinds of different things well it's delicious the chili is done processing out of our pressure canner and it is now time to review it and see <laughs> what it looks like we've already let this completely cool down we had it off over on the counter Now we know we space these really tight on here just to show you guys we're going to obviously move them about an inch apart so that they can air out but mm -hmm. doesn't it just look beautiful yeah and these are such a great thing to kick start your meal with you know i mean you could eat it just plain like this but as we talked about before it's a fabulous base for so many mm -hmm. different recipes that you can do with it as well if you're enjoying these videos make sure that you click the like button and we would love it if you would subscribe also, we are doing live premieres every Monday at 2 with additional videos here and there during the week.